my Zentangle friends. This is Barbara Langston, CZT, Certified Zentangle Teacher, and welcome to day 23 of the Inktober Tangles for 2023. Can you believe we're already on day 23? Only eight days to go. I hope you're having fun. I have learned a lot of tangles that I've never seen before, and that's the beauty of Inktober is we're introduced to a lot of patterns to try and if you like them you have something new to put into your categories of tangles okay uh, this is my sketchbook this is a page out of it uh, I made this using a disc bound system if you're interested in how I did it there is a link in the description below this video there's also links in the description to the introductory videos for inktober 2023 and if you don't know anything about this series then i would encourage you to listen to the two introductory videos and day one to show you how we're going to put our titles together okay let's scoot this out of the way if you happen to post on social media, I would ask you to please use this at BBL underscore tangles in your post so that it lets me know that you've put something out there and I just love seeing what you've done. Okay, we are using Zentangle tiles, three and a half inch, and we have set them up with W2 as the string and again this is all explained in the first videos okay ruse r-o-o-s by oswaldo burbano czt he is a czt in spain and i first learned about him during covid when the spanish teachers were providing free videos <clears throat> live videos on Instagram and I got so many cool lessons from those teachers and um, Oswaldo was one of them. This is a very interesting pattern and I can tell you I practiced it many times before it finally became clear in my head. I didn't do just this. <laughs> I'll quickly show you a few of my scrap pages okay and um, another one um, did this one just this morning to see how I wanted to fit this onto our tile but one thing that <clears throat> as I went through the step outs I didn't feel like I understood what he wanted us to do and so I actually redid the step out. You're welcome to take a picture of this and use it as you want. But um, I did each of these in a grid. I feel like this is a grid tangle. So I did a square grid. You can, <clears throat> excuse me, kind of see it. It's lightly done in pencil. And then these um, zigzag lines. And I found that you really needed to have these peaks and valleys line up. If so, it made it a whole lot better. And when I started out, I made, and I'll show you here, I made these little caps here too short, and I made these little lines too short. And you'll see as we get into this what I mean. So. Where I have this in red, of course, these are the next steps. So those little lines coming off the peak need to be up into this area, okay? And then these little tabs that we're going to make go around these. And then this is the part, and I know it's just one simple step, but I had to get it in my mind. Um, if you turn it upside down, that's the same as this. But then we're coming up and over these other little lines, okay? And then we're going to fill those in. And once I was able to see that these tabs 
are kind of overlapping where these are. Hopefully that makes sense. That's why I shaded them like this. This is going over this area, and that one's going over that area. Okay, and then we darken it in. I um, hope that helps you. It helped me a lot to understand what the pattern was trying to do. Okay. Again, this tab is going over a section of this tab. All right. So let's get started on it and see what we come up with. Okay. I do try my best to make these um, easy for me to understand and easy for you to understand. Okay, I'm going to set this up here so you can kind of see. That eh, might be in the way. But we're going to do our grid. We're going to divide this in with two lines that will give us three sections. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing going this way. One here. Okay. It doesn't matter that these aren't exactly square or exactly the same. What's going to matter to me is that the peaks and the valleys line up. All right. So what I did was I started in about the center of each of these squares and then brought it down to each corner. I am using a Micron PN today and graphite pencil and a blending stump, also known as a tortillon. You can use any paper, any supplies that you have, okay? It doesn't have to be a Zentangle tile, just paper, pen, pencil, and you're ready. Okay, like I said, these peaks and valleys here and here, if they line up, then it's going to look good. And again, I'm coming in about the center of these squares and bringing that down. Kind of lining these up a little bit. Okay, so that was our first step. And now we're going to add these lines on the peaks and valleys. Now this one, <clears throat> okay, on this top here, I've seen where they just put these R's and fill them in. You can put these little lines and dots here, or you could just leave that blank, okay? Because I'm not going to add anything down here, and you don't have to put anything on the top. But I'm going to go ahead and do it with a not very long line on these top parts. Now on these, I'm going to go actually higher. I don't know if you can see the pencil line, but I'm a little bit above that. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn it over, and I'm going to do the same thing. Now these are peaks, and we're going to go up into that a little bit. Okay, we don't have to put lines over here because it's right against that, and same thing here. We can, if you want, just kind of show that there would be lines there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so the next step is to put these little caps. And you can put a little bit of a curve there at the bottom, or 
you can just start by putting these caps. And we're going to go up into that, come back down. And there would have been a little bit of a line here, okay? So we're just going to do part of that. Same here. We're just going to put part of it, All right? So on this row, these may be kind of fat. <laughs> You might want to practice this on scrap paper before you put it on your tile that you've prepared for October. Okay, I'm not going to do anything on these. <clears throat> and now I'm going to do the same thing on this other side. Okay. And I know they're not meeting up yet, but we're going to make them meet. Okay, so this is where hopefully it will start making sense what's happening. So I'm going to start here where this little thing has come around. And it's going to go under this and then connect to that one. We're just going to do one section at a time. Where this one is coming up, it's going to go under this tab, come out, and meet there. Mine end up being a really <clears throat> odd shape, but it's okay. All right, so here we are here again on this side. It's going under this tab and coming down. All right, let's go to this next row. It's going to go under that tab, come down and meet here. This one goes under, comes down to meet that one. Same thing here, comes down to meet that one. Now, if I'd made these exactly the same, it might look better, but it's really okay. So here we go again. This one is going to come under here, under this tab. It comes over to meet that one. This one comes under to meet there. This one goes under, and we don't see. And then that one goes under. All right, same thing here. Goes under this tab. Comes down. Under. Meets here. Goes under, and we don't see where it goes. And then on this side, it goes back over. All right. <clears throat> now, we fill in these areas that are between our little tabs. Like I said, it so, uh, the section's not perfect. Let's just say that. <laughs> I have tried so hard to get this to look the way it does in Oswaldo's tiles, but uh, it's okay. I'm happy that I figured this out. You can just kind of... Uh, Try to even these out a little bit to look the same. If you get these looking right, my daughter thought they looked like owl eyes. Mine do not. 
on Oswaldo's tile. They looked like owl eyes. Like I said, if you practice this a few times before you actually do it on your tile, it'll look better. <laughs> I promise. I hope anyway. <laughs> I'm sorry. Some of these are very challenging, but I'm very happy when I figure out how to do it. Um, this one is absolutely not perfect. But uh, I am thrilled that I got it to look this good. Okay, I'm going to put these little dots at the top of these to distract your eye. <laughs> so you look at the other parts. Just have fun with these. I do stress quite a bit when I'm trying to uh, learn these because I want to show you how to draw them and I want you to have fun. Oop. Okay, so all I was doing was adding these little dots at the top. Okay. Um, as far as shading on this one, like so what I did in these was I just added color that would help to show how these rows are working. Um, but we can, because this is going over this tab, okay, and this is going over that. So let's just go to these little curves and add some shading. So on the top of our tabs, and our tabs go in both directions. Okay, then we're going to take our blending stump and just soften those on each side. I forgot to put graphite there, but I have enough on my blending stump that I can just go ahead and put some down. Um, you can go back and remove those lines. I should have done that before I did my shading but I'm at least going to remove them there and down here. All right, there we go. <laughs> Ruse by Oswaldo Burbano. Sorry, I'm trying to get this to come back down. There we go. So again, there's the step out. If you want to get a screenshot of it, you're welcome to do that. <clears throat> that was day 23. And uh, just enjoy it. <laughs> just have fun with these patterns. And you'll have a collection of things that you've learned 
You can decide what you want to use in your tiles after October. And um, tomorrow is day 24, which is Fletch by Heidi K. And that's a fun one. All right. Thanks for joining me. Hope you'll come back tomorrow. Please hit the like button and subscribe and share and send me your comments because I love reading them. And again, if you post on social media, please tag me with at BBL Tangles. And here's the hashtag, ink, uh, hashtag Inktober Tangles 2023. All right. Thank you. See you next time. Bye.